Hey, welcome back to the channel. Christine I see here. Matt will show you the 2022 Ford Transit wiring harness, the factory, the way it has set. He wants to redo it and put it within the walls. And he explains that also in the video. There is a section in the video where he, stuff that doesn't necessarily need to be done, but it's also good information to know if you ever need to get in that, that wiring. But he corrects himself around the six minute mark where, hey, you didn't need to do that that was just a little bit overdone, that this is all you need to do. Now this is our DIY custom built. We're taking this van the way we want it for ourselves and how we travel. So keep that in mind before you comment <laughs> of, oh my God, he did what? So please, I, I think Matt's fairly savvy with, uh, with building and comfortable. So disclaimer right there, this is our build. Um, you don't have to do any of this that you don't feel comfortable with. So enjoy, and I'll see you at the end. Welcome back everyone. Today I'm doing a little project on the wiring of the van. In particular, I'm trying to move the wire harness, the original wire harness that came with the van. You can see here there's the wiring harness here. Obviously it comes up from the front. It's got then a couple different wires here. This one goes up and it's for the antenna, and then this one here goes all the way up and is part of the wiring then for the gnome lights inside. It also comes back then, comes back all along the wall here, up and over top, down into this wall here. Now we have enough room, most likely that this might be able to stay in place, but be pushed up to the top these because it's indented probably could for sure but because of where the bed lift system is this might not end up pushing up might not be able to push up high enough that I can make that work out and fit the bed lift in there so because of that I want to try to tuck the original factory wire loom into this cavity here and run it all the way along this part here is open enough that I can run it from the front all the way here so there's a bulkhead that follows along right in here and it blocks then it going from this side to that side. So because of that, that looks like the major obstacle. This is open all the way across. There's actually a nice opening to duck back in and it comes right out top there and then I can run those across. Same thing here, I want this to be nice and tight up against there so I don't have to put out then a, a furring strip, so I don't have to put a furring strip on there to hide that wire. What I'm gonna work on now is finding where all the connections are down at the bottom here. Turn the light back on, there we go. Find all the connections in the bottom there and see if I can fish all that out and see what size the connectors are to decide what I'm gonna do over here. A couple thoughts I have, number one is I could just cut a groove in this right here. Cut, take the cutoff wheel and cut this little piece out and then I could, you know, the wiring will come into here and then it would just fit right through there. I'd lose a little bit of structure here. I can't imagine that's going to be that structural when it's connected all the way on the other side also. The other thought I had is actually taking this and making a larger hole here. If I do that, then I can use actually on a, a step bit or something and drill through this part of it here going this way and then I wouldn't lose any structure here, I could just then run it up through an opening. I'm not sure, because I have to find out how big the connectors are, so to decide how big of a hole I would have to drill, versus if I just cut this out, it only has to be as wide as the wire itself to fit into that section there. So we'll see, I'm gonna take it all apart here next, and I'll keep you updated. Here's what I have so far. There is this large connector here, Push and take that apart. There's two connectors here that are mounted here that then get disconnected. And it looks like there's one other that goes into the tail light. And then also these grounds down here all have to come off. Here's the other wire then that comes through from that and hits the tail light. The tail light comes off, there's two screws. You have to open the door. There's two torque screws there. And then these are just push pins. They just push into the slot there. So you take off the two bolts, 
and then this just pops backwards. This just has a rubber grommet on it and pushes straight back in like so. Here we are still pulling the rest of that wiring harness to come across. You have to take the bumper cover off and there's Torx bits along in here and then some push pins on the bottom and the bumper cover comes off because the wiring harness runs along all the way across to here so these have to come out so then you can pull this back up through the top at least that's what it appears so hopefully that's going to be the case now removing this other part of the bumper cover here so get the light in there yeah you can see there's a torx bit here two torx bits there and then a snap snap there then the side comes off and then two more torx bits and then i believe this side pin will come off which will allow me access to the parts i need to to get the rest of the wiring out of there now after taking this side cover off which is three torx bits then there's torx that hold this side cover on here and then here underneath this panel here this comes off with two push pins here and then these are push ins like so now it's cold enough unfortunately these broke you can see here those broke there i have more of them though i would encourage anyone doing this just like i did to buy a ford kit of pins so that way you have these little plastic connectors that way you can replace them as they break which unfortunately you will break some then it gets pushed back through this hole here which will allow me to pull it back up in the van from the inside now i'll pull this up here this will pull the rest of the way up from the outside i can pull it up the wall and out through the opening there okay all this that i just did back here pulling it off all the way across here all the way over to here and everything uh never mind don't do any of that to here once you get this side off pull this little filter out here which basically you can see there's little tabs on it that hold it in from pull these little plastic flaps up and you can undo the tabs and it comes right out once you do that there are two connectors right in here you can see there's two connectors there and those connectors undo this wire and that's all you have to do all of this wire that i pulled out the bumper cover all that actually didn't need to come off and here there are two connectors one for the backup camera and one then for i would assume is the upper tail light they just unclip there's the clips for those and then we're going to continue on around and the rest of this just unfolds goes down to the bottom there. i'm sorry it goes down to the front there and on the driver's side here very similar have to undo the ground straps there there's a couple of connectors there one of them that comes across the top here connects forward here there's no connector on it in my van i don't know what that would be for in other ones but there isn't in mine take off the tail light on this side through that opening then and now we'll pull it out through the top here all right got the ear protection on got eye protection on i'm going to cut out a section here there's a bulkhead here that blocks the wiring harness from coming from the far side through here so i'm going to cut a little groove in this so i can put it right through there i was going to drill a hole i thought about trying to drill it with a, a a hole saw or a step bit a big enough hole but some of these connectors are pretty big so it'd be tough to drill that big of a hole so i'm just going to cut a groove in that got this cut through here it's still connected on the back side here I'm gonna see how much movement it takes to hopefully break this piece of it off and that way I can cut through this once I get this out of the way just some large pliers
So you can see there's a spot weld that held that on right there. Now I'm gonna see if I can use the cutoff wheel and cut off a part of this. So that way I've got a path then through from here up to there. Now I'm gonna again, try to cut down this a little bit more so I can fold that back flat there. I'm gonna make this just a little wider in case this sticks proud of this a little bit. I'm gonna cut this off flat here. This is just a little bit bigger. We should be able to make that work now through here. I shouldn't, I might, this, there's still a little bit of a bulkhead right here, but there's a gap here. So I believe I'll fit all the way through there. If not, I might have to continue this down here to get rid of some of this right in there, this part that's indented. But I'm gonna try it the way it is first. I'm gonna take this and file this down here so this is all smooth, that way it won't cut any of the wires. I'll cover this to protect it with some tape and so forth. And then we gotta do something similar up there, figure out where that's gonna go through. For this one, there's a little bit of a bulkhead here and then one here, but there is a gap in there. So the wire would almost fit through here. So I think I'm gonna try on this side to use the step bit right in about here and see if I can make an opening for it to go in. But if it went in here, the bulkhead's gonna be about here. So it'll be just on this side of the window. So if it went in somewhere in this range, that would be just fine. I'm gonna reach in here. There's, like I said, a flat piece inside there, but there's a gap. So I don't know if it'll fit, if I can slide it up through there, I think I can. So again, if I put my hole back in here, I think that'll work, but let's see. Put a hole saw on just so I can get a big enough opening so the adapters can go through or the connectors can go through. Now, this steel is very tough. It dulls bits. Hopefully this will cut through it decently enough. We're gonna have to see. Said, that's so tough my bit on here is dull enough I'm having a hard time getting it through I'm gonna have to get a little better pilot in there take three or four whatever this is Whew. that is tough stuff barely even making a scratch in it so as far as the hole saw goes, I don't know if this is just dull enough that it's just not cutting it. I can't decide. So we're gonna switch to a different bit again. Same thing, barely scratching the surface. So again, we use the heck out of these bits so they could all just be duller and all get out. So I think I'm actually gonna just go ahead and switch to cutting a, using the cutoff wheel and cutting a square in it instead. It's going to be covered up so it doesn't have to be perfectly pretty but this cut pretty well with the flat with the cutoff wheel so let's see if we can do the same here all right now we got that protected a little bit better let's go ahead and cut the next spot now with that opening i should be able to feed it in there all the way across over to here Turn off that light so you can see it better. Over to here, it'll come in between this, up into here, all the way back there. I still have to figure out how to get from there inside um, to that run there. That'll be next once I get it back that far. So I filed down these edges so they're smooth, and then I put two layers of thick tape on it to give it a little extra protection. I will protect the wires with a little wire loom, an extra wire loom also through this opening and anywhere that it goes through on the inside where it might cut the uh, wires o over time just rubbing. So we'll protect it here and then all the way along the path if we need to. Now we just stuff it back through. Now that we're getting it back together here, just to go over this again. So there are two connectors in here. These obviously go to here. I think if you had small enough hands, you could probably reach through the floor 
and unhook these without taking this off. This obviously is easier to take this off, but I had thought this coming through here going across was what would pull through. Obviously it does not, all you have to do is disconnect there. So all of taking the bumper apart, putting all this across here is unnecessary. Just need to get off this side panel to get into this area. Got the wiring harness all buttoned up now, all back together. So instead of, you can see it runs down the wall like it did before, and this junction part of it is very similar to what it was, but now it's tucked in inside there. Again, this comes to the outside. This part being on the outside, this part being on the outside won't affect what I'm doing because there's a cabinet here and that is behind a wall panel there enough. I did have to notch that out and that's because with the way the new route was, this was a little short if I didn't. But now the wiring is tucked up behind. You can see it goes through this notch there and then along here. I still have to move these because the dome lights are coming out and then this is the antenna so that'll be very easy to tuck right up in through there back up to where it goes that is it hey thank you for watching i hope you made it all the way through matt does really take the time to get all the stuff because he actually found out there wasn't a lot of videos on the factory factory wiring harness of the Ford Transit. So he wanted to make it out there for you as well so you have the information. Now there, there are certain things that we do on this build that probably you're uncomfortable doing. Matt, he's pretty, you know, he's pretty savvy, I have to say, around a car. That's how we're building ours. You don't have to build it that way, but just this is the way we're doing it and everything is turning out. So I have several videos to get out to you. It is so cool, I'm, I'm loving it. So, see you then.